Okay. Um, so we talked about the intro. Where's my pen? We talked about the intro to inverse functions. We talked about the properties, right? That inverse functions have to satisfy. I want to show you how to find an inverse function from an equation and then you know determine the composition to check and verify that they are inverses. So um, let's look at this here. So I'm going to randomly make one up. So I'm going to say, oops, let's do it. So my regular function will be in white and the inverse will be in yellow. So here's a function, I don't know, 2x minus 3. This is my function given. It could be in function notation. You know, you could be given a function, you know, this is the same thing as f of x equal to 2x minus 3, right? They're the same exact thing. f of x takes the place of y. This is function notation, and this is just representing in terms of y and x. So if it's originally in, in f of x, given as that, then replace f of x with y. And then we're going to go ahead and I'll show the process with green. Find the inverse of this function. So this function is given. It's linear, right? And any line technically is one to one in a function. So that's satisfied. Let's find the inverse. So in order to find the inverse, I'm going to switch my y and my x. So where I see y, I replace it with x. And where I see x, I replace it with y. And then I have to go through the process of isolating y. So to isolate y, let's add 3 to both sides. I'm going to bring this 2y over here equal to x plus 3, and then divide both sides by 2. So I get y is equal to, I'm going to separate this as 1 half x plus 3 over 2, right? So this is x over 2, or 1 half x plus 3 over 2. And I wrote it that way for a reason, because this is also a line. Um, and if you want, you could graph the two and show the symmetry over the line y equals x. But this now, once I isolate my y, is my inverse. Okay? So this was the process of finding the inverse. I just found the inverse of the original function, which is in white, f of x. So this is how I find it. I switch my x and my y, I isolate y, and then I put it in my function notation. Now here's my check. I'll do it in red. Here's the check. So sometimes you're going to be asked to check and make sure that they are inverses. And if you um, need to check it, you're going to do your composition. You're going to do your composition. Okay, so we have to do it in both directions. So this first one says I'm going to, it's always this into this. It's always like backwards. This function into this function. So I'm plugging f inverse into f. Well, here's f. So I'm, I'm finding this composition here. f says 2 times x. But I'm replacing x with the inverse, 1 half x plus 3 halves. 2 times x, I replaced x with the inverse. And then don't forget minus 3. So this says plug f of f inverse into f. Plug this into this. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, simplify. <laughs> when I distribute the 2 into the parentheses, 2 times 1 half is 1, so 1x. And then 2 times 3 halves is 3. So 1, I'm sorry, x, and then plus 3 minus 3 simplifies into x. That's what I want. I want the composition to simplify into x, but it has to be in both directions. So the first one that I did plugged f inverse into f, I have to now do the opposite. This is sloppy, sorry. Um, and plug f into f inverse. So you have to do both of these and they both have to simplify to x in order for the inverse to exist. It's always this into this. So now I want to place or plug f and replace it and plug it into x. So I'm plugging it in here. So one half first. This is being plugged into here. 2x minus 3, right? Plugging this into here. And then plus 3 halves. And then let's simplify. Okay. Let's see what I get. So one half distributed. One half times 2 is 1. Times x is x. And one half times negative 3 is negative 3 halves. 
and then plus three halves. And then obviously anything, you know, plus itself when they're opposites is zero. This simplifies into X. The composition in both directions simplifies into X. And therefore they are in fact inverses. So we verified that they are inverses after we determined and found the inverse, right? So again, how do I find the inverse? I, you know, switch my X and my Y variable. So where I see Y, I replace it with X. Where I see S, I replace X, with, I replace it with Y. And then isolate my Y to find the inverse and put it in function notation. And then if I want the composition, I always plug the second one into the first. So I'm plugging the inverse into this one for this first case, and then vice versa, plugging F into F inverse, plugging F into F inverse. Both should simplify to X if the inverses exist. 